Uh, meantime, President Trump says if the NFL doesn't change its policy on protest during the national anthem, uh, quote, their business is going to hell. I think the NFL is in a box. I think they're in a really bad box. You look at what's happening with their ratings, you look at what's going. I mean, frankly, the only thing that's doing well in the NFL is the pregame because everybody wants to see what's going on. The NFL is in a very bad box. You cannot have people disrespecting our national anthem, our flag, our country, and that's what they're doing. And in my opinion, the NFL has to change. Or you know what's going to happen? Their business is going to go to hell. But in today's NFL media availability, several players said the conversation about the purpose of their protest isn't going anywhere. We've got to continue to keep talking about it. Uh, one thing that we're going to do here is continue to support uh, the players. Um, like I said last week after, after the game, uh, we believe in love and equality. So um, if guys want to continue to keep doing that, we're going to support them. Um, but we can't let that take away from our focus from this week's game. Uh, like I said, we want to be proactive versus reactive. Last week was kind of a special um, moment because the president had said something uh, two days before game. But um, like I said, we can't let that take away from our focus this week on the football game. That's the NFL. Meantime, the owners of another American sport are siding with the president on this issue. NASCAR, Richard Petty uh, and Richard Childress have threatened to fire their drivers if they protested during the national anthem. And my next guest says... That doesn't come as a surprise. He is Bill Lester, one of uh, four African-American drivers since 1961 to compete at NASCAR's top level. Bill Lester, uh, a pleasure meeting you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate the invite. So um, before we talk NASCAR, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on the president's message uh, on NFL has to change or the business is going to hell. What did you make of that? Well, that's the first time I heard about that, and I'm taken aback by that comment as well as a lot of the comments that he's made. I mean, he's uh, very opinionated and uh, oftentimes, as far as I'm concerned, to a fault. He should be trying to unify this country as opposed to polarizing it. There are so many people on either one extreme or the other extreme, and that just seems to be the wrong message in terms of what this country needs in terms of unification. It seems to me like, you know, every so often when there's a major, you know, catastrophic event, we come together as Americans, like, for example, 9-11. We were all Americans. We all bonded and got together with each other. And as soon as 9-11 went away, we all went back into our silos. And it was, you know, this person versus that person. They look different. They act different, that sort of thing. Well, the same thing kind of happened recently with regard to the events in uh, Houston and in Florida with regard to the hurricanes. I mean, everybody pulled together essentially as Americans. And now as kind of the spotlight has shifted, um, you know, we still have issues here where we're talking about race. Uh, let's get into that because, you know, as we've been talking about the NFL, we're talking about NASCAR because it was earlier this week the president actually took to Twitter uh, praising NASCAR and said, so proud of NASCAR and its supporters and fans. They won't put up with disrespecting our country or our flag. They said it loud and clear. Now, uh, just about 70 percent of the NFL uh, is black. And you know the story with NASCAR. Um, so <laughs> is, is that a fair comparison for the president to make? Well, you know, my thoughts about it are that those that are in NASCAR, that's a culture. You know, these drivers, these crew members and such, they typically grew up in the southeast. They grew up together. They came up through the system of short track racing, dirt track racing, that sort of thing. They know each other. They all have common beliefs, bonds, culture. And so yeah, they're all pretty much peas in a pot. You know, this is an over-exaggeration, but for the most part, that's the case. As opposed to somebody like myself, who, you know, I came from the West Coast, from Northern California. I have a technical background with a degree in engineering. I came from a completely different type of racing, which is sports car road racing, as opposed to NASCAR racing. And when I came over, believe me, I was not really embraced. Um, the fact You've is that- You've been booed. You've I've been, been booed. booed. I have been booed, and it was surprising to me because, uh, you know, I think that I did a great job behind the wheel. I think that I respected the sport, um, but for no reason that I can foresee, I was booed. So that happened mostly at tracks where, you know, it's very non-progressive. And I'll just call it out, Talladega, Alabama. I've never been so uncomfortable in a racing environment as Talladega mm -hmm. or Martinsville, Virginia, which specifically was one of the places where I was booed very heavily. And I just couldn't understand why. I, I've never made disparaging remarks or offended anybody to my knowledge, but for whatever reason, I wasn't really embraced. Now, that's not to a man. I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised about the fact that there were some fans that really did, you know, embrace me and say, we're happy you're here. 
But by and large, for the most part, you know, when you're getting booed loud and clear for mm -hmm. nothing that you think you deserve, it makes you sit back and take pause. Well, good for you for staying in that seat and, and doing the do, Bill Lester. And, you know, as you're talking about Talladega and, and Alabama, I'm thinking about this is where this whole conversation started, right, with the president in Alabama uh, last week when, when he said what he did, um, the, the son, son, son's b a bitch, forgive me for cursing, I'm just quoting the president, um, you know, comment. Uh, the, the president has said that these football players, you know, are private em employees who are, he sees it, they're at work while they're taking a knee or standing arm in arm, which he says makes it inappropriate. I mean, do, do you understand this argument? I mentioned, you know, Richard Petty or Richard Childress and wanting their drivers to, to be fired if, if they dare do this. I mean, the, the, I guess, what are, they, what are they trying to do? Just ultimately protect the NASCAR brand? Or is it much more than that? Well, you know, one of the differences between NASCAR and, like, football and basketball, baseball, there is no players association or players union or anything like that in NASCAR. It's a NASCAR is an independently owned um, operation company. It's uh, not one where you know you have um, you know a board or anything of that nature. For the most part, you know it is independently owned and operated. And the owners are basically those that can come with their money, with their resources, and participate. Now those employees, those drivers, uh, they have no protection. So they are employees of that racing team. And if they go against the wishes and the um, owner's mm. uh, beliefs, then they, they can potentially fired. be fired and there's no recourse. So, of course, they're going to stand up and, you know, march to the beat of that person that employs them. Mm. It's incredible what's happened and how this continues, just everything that the comments the president continues to make. We've got more conversations on this. Bill Lester, thank you for your voice. Nice thank to you. have you on, sir, very much. And tonight. Uh,